history is full of firsts. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Many of those firsts shaped our way of life. For 70 years, KPRC Channel 2 has been proud to be pioneers in shaping television and Houston history. Place that has a sense of history, and indeed it is. See, taking the president from spring to college station. If you have something you'd like Channel 2 Investigates to check out, call the tip line at 713-223-TIPS or email investigates at click2houston.com. From KPRC, this is Channel 2 News at 10. We start tonight with breaking news in Southeast Houston. The Gulf Freeway has just reopened after a deadly auto pedestrian crash there. You're getting a live look at the traffic that's starting to move once again from our Houston Transtar cameras. Police say a man was trying to cross the main lanes of the freeway in that particular area when he was hit. The driver who hit him, we're told, did stay on the scene. Police do not believe alcohol played a factor in that crash, though. The victim has not been identified. Another deadly crash under investigation tonight, this time in northwest Harris County near Bamble, North Houston and Champions Forest. Harris County deputies are working to learn what led up to the two vehicle crash there. Officials say one person was killed in that crash. No word on how many other people were injured. Deputies do, however, say that everyone that was involved in the crash did remain at the scene. Three days after a two year old boy was badly beaten, we've since learned that he has died from his injuries. Authorities have charged his uncle, the same man who's been caring for the little boy since his mother has been in another country. Channel 2's Marianne Martinez is live tonight at Memorial Hermann with what exactly happened to that little boy. Marianne? Good evening, Jonathan. That little boy dying here at the hospital where he has been since Thursday on life support. We're also learning tonight that in the last few months of his life, he made a dangerous journey from Honduras to the United States, was separated from his mother in Mexico, only to come to Houston to die. Two-year-old Kevin was sent to the United States in hopes of a better life. Several months ago, little Kevin, his brother, their mom, and uncle left their native Honduras to journey to the United States. According to a woman who has been caring for Kevin and his brother, his mother decided to stay in Mexico. Kevin and his brother continued to the U.S. with their uncle, Malvin Morales Gomez. Morales Gomez and a woman have been caring for the children in an apartment in northwest Houston until Thursday. That's when the Harris County Sheriff's Office says Kevin was taken to this hospital and later airlifted to Memorial Hermann with what the sheriff called horrific injuries. During Morales Gomez's first court appearance, prosecutors say Kevin had been bitten and squeezed. Those injuries included swelling to the brain, which was not receiving adequate oxygen. Prosecutors also say he had fractured and broken bones. Sheriff Ed Gonzalez tweeting about Kevin's death, saying, quote, the little guy never had a chance. Morales Gomez is still in jail on a $500,000 bond. Kevin's eight-year-old brother is now in CPS custody. And Morales Gomez is expected back in court tomorrow where it is expected his charges will be upgraded now that his nephew has died. Now there is also an immigration hold on Morales Gomez since he is 
uh, not a citizen of the United States. Reporting live, Marianne Martinez, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Aaron, thank you so much for that story. The Coast Guard is still working tonight to clear and contain a crude oil spill near Baytown that has reached the shore now. It happened along Tabs Bay where an estimated 630 gallons spilled out from a wellhead. Authorities are now using more than 700 feet of boom to control that spill. They're also using about 2,000 feet of absorbent material that has since been placed along the shoreline. The cause of the spill remains under investigation. It was a gorgeous Sunday coming to a close. Justin Stapleton joins us now with what we can expect for the start of the work week. Hopefully more of the same, but probably not going to last. Well, yes and no is probably the short answer to that. 70s, yes. Sunshine, no. Clouds will be replacing that, and the showers will be soon after. Uh, and then that cold front, we're going to be watching that too as we get in towards your Wednesday. Right now, though, still fairly mild out there. It's not too bad, you know, sweater weather for sure, but for the most part, we've got a pretty good looking forecast. We're looking at upper 50s to low 60s, so certainly almost about where we should be for highs for this time of year. 64, by the way, if you're playing at home. A little bit of cloud cover moving in now. Now, but as you jump a little closer down and towards South Texas, we've got some light showers sliding in from northern Mexico, and this is the general direction where we'll see the showers come by tomorrow afternoon. They're nothing real heavy, but they will be out there, so I'll show you the timing here in just a couple of minutes. Right now, though, upper 50s, 60, still 60 as you get down towards Galveston, and your overnight forecast looks pretty similar to this. We'll see those overnight lows slowly dip down into the mid 50s, so not much movement from where we're at now, and then we'll quickly jump back up into the 60s and 70s by tomorrow, but that cold front's lingering out there. We'll talk time and we'll also talk about where parts of the state will see some wintry precipitation as winter's not done just yet for the great state of Texas. We'll get into that in your work week forecast, Jonathan, just a bit. All right, see you soon, Justin. Remember, you can track the weather anytime you want by downloading Frank's free weather app. All you have to do is search for KPRC in your app store. There you go, the Kansas City Chiefs defeating the San Francisco 49ers. A final score there, 31 to 20. The Chiefs actually rallying late to win their very first Super Bowl title in 50 years, with Damian Williams scoring the touchdown that really sealed the W for Kansas City. Thousands of fans are celebrating tonight in and outside of Hard Rock Stadium. Ari Alexander in the middle of all that fun. He joins us right now, and Ari, what a game. Yeah, unbelievable jubilation from Kansas City fans as soon as they saw that the game was starting to slip away from the 49ers. Lots of them still here milling about, a little bit of partying here at Hard Rock Stadium. Game started slow, but it ended up being a terrific Super Bowl. Let's take a look at the highlights here. It's Super Bowl 54 at Hard Rock Stadium in Miami. Patrick Mahomes, Jimmy Garoppolo, the two quarterbacks, it is on them to lead their teams to the Super Bowl. And late in this game is 2010 at one point, third and 15. Patrick Mahomes is going deep to Tyreek Hill, and that is going to bring up Damian Williams. Gets the pitch. Williams is going into the corner of the end. A little controversy here with the pylon, but Williams' score makes it 20 to 17. And at that point, you kind of could feel that Patrick Mahomes could bring his team back one more time. Mahomes to Williams uh, for makes the score 24 20 rather Travis Kelsey the, the score to make it 2017 Williams scores to get the lead and then one more Damian Williams touchdown ices the game celebration is on and the fans here in Miami are loving it you know it's pretty amazing it's a chance of a lifetime to be here at the stadium and watch the behind for the victory I mean there's no other there's no other expression you can give other than just amazing Right, thoughts on Patrick Mahomes? That's the man. Come on. Executing again. All the way down the field. Big time. Yeah, some of those fans really excited. Coming up tonight on Sports Sunday, going to cover a few topics. Patrick Mahomes looking to become maybe one of the greatest ever. We're going to talk about that. Plus the three comebacks, especially, of course, the one against the Texans. But the Kansas City Chiefs made a habit of making comebacks. And the 49ers defense, supposed to be one of the best units in the league, gives up three touchdowns in the last eight minutes of the game. All of that coming up later tonight on Sports Sunday. So reporting live from Miami, Ari Alexander, KPRC, Channel 2 Sports. I mean, do we have to talk about the comeback on the Texans, though? Thanks a lot for that, Ari. Hey, our Super Bowl coverage continues in sports. Coming up at 1030, we're going to be talking about that high-energy halftime performance with J-Lo along with Shakita. Turning out of the race for the White House, on the eve of the Iowa caucuses, candidates are making a last-minute push to win over the electorate and meet as many people as possible. Channel 2 Sion Rhodes making the trip to Des Moines for those caucuses. She joins 
joins us live with the work being done tonight. And it was a frantic push on this last full day of campaigning. Super Bowl Sunday in Iowa, the day before the Iowa caucuses, means rooting for your team. Go Chiefs! And rooting for your candidate. Not only did they have my team in it, but I also got to hear and see Bernie today while the Super Bowl was playing in the background. Like, that was my personal Super Bowl, for sure. Senator Bernie Sanders hosting a Super Bowl watch party at a Des Moines bar. Uh, tomorrow night is the beginning. Yes. It is the beginning of the end for Donald Trump. Yes. In these final hours, crowds gathering inside high school gymnasiums instead of around the TV. <laughs> giving the candidates one more chance before the Super Bowl of politics kicks off Monday night. The game is the game, so to speak, and we're just going to do our best, and it's going to be all about live strategy. And so caucusing kicks off all across the state here, 1,600 precinct sites tomorrow at 7 o'clock. I'm going to be inside one of those precinct locations, bringing you all the action tomorrow night. Look for my reports then. Reporting live, Sion Rhodes, KPRC, Channel 2 News. We'll be looking for him. Thanks a lot for that, Sion. Hey, if you were planning to vote in the primaries, listen up. Tomorrow is the last day to register to vote. Voter registration applications must be received or postmarked by tomorrow night in order for you to be eligible to vote in next month's primary election. You can register at any local library post office with a volunteer deputy voter register or any Harris County tax office branch as well. well. Good morning for your good news, that is, for your morning commute. The West Loop at the Southwest Freeway will be reopening at 5 o'clock bright and early in the morning. A construction project forced the road to be shut down all weekend. Crews are working to hang bridge beams for a new connector ramp in the area. Although the roads will reopen in the morning, it is an ongoing project, and that area will be shut down each and every weekend for the rest of the month. Houston Texans star J.J. Watt hit the SNL stage for plenty of fun last night as he was a host. He played several interesting characters, made fun of himself, even made jokes while promoting a fake product. My puffy under eyes used to make me too shy to play football. J.J., what's with the puffy eye bag? Now I can stop worrying about fine lines and focus on the offensive line. Uh, if you missed the epic performance, we've got you covered. We've posted some of the highlights on our website at click2houston.com. And coming up at 1030, Justin and I are talking through some of our favorite moments of the night as well. New developments in the hair stock controversy that's getting attention around the nation. Politicians now getting behind DeAndre Arnold after he was told he couldn't walk at graduation because of his dreadlocks. Plus, a Houston hospital working to help hundreds of veterans battling PTSD. The innovative way they're lending a helping hand. That's all next. Also, new developments in what's being called a terror incident in London. Police now naming the person they say strapped on a bomb and stabbed two people. Stay with us. All next. I did. We're watching Channel 2, Houston's home for news. We're getting our first look at the man accused of strapping on a fake bomb and stabbing two people in a London street before being shot to death by police. Investigators say they are confident the attacker was this man, 20-year-old Sudish Aman. According to police, he was recently released from prison where he was behind bars for terrorism offenses. The attack happened in a residential neighborhood, something a member of parliament says is unlike that area. Streatham's a, a wonderful community, extremely diverse, um, and we haven't had an issue uh, like this as, as, as far as back as I can remember, and I've lived here my entire life. Um, it, it's very sad. It is also quite scary uh, for people in Streatham, but I would encourage them not, not to be afraid. The police do have the situation under control. One person who was being treated for life-threatening in uh, injuries, that is, has reportedly improved and is now listed as stable. The death toll from the coronavirus continues to climb tonight. So far, 361 people have died in China and the number of cases worldwide surging past 17,000. Earlier today, a ninth case was confirmed here in the U.S. Dallas Love Field is among the latest airports to join the list that will take incoming flights carrying passengers from China. The U.S. military now preparing for possible quarantine housing for people infected with coronavirus. Potential locations include Lackland Air Force Base, not too far away in San Antonio. The horrors of war, both physical and emotional, can have a long-lasting impact on our military servicemen and women. Many suffer from PTSD, which can lead to depression and, sadly for some, suicide as well. But as Channel 2's Keith Garvin shows us, Houston's VA hospital is trying some new techniques to turn tragedy into hope. 
you know, I lost my sense of identity. I lost my purpose. Spencer Walker, former Corporal Spencer Walker of the United States Marine Corps. After serving four years, including a deployment to Operation Iraqi Freedom, the transition back to civilian life didn't go as planned. Walker initially noticed the culture shock after enrolling in college classes. And so from being, you know, an NCO, a corporal of Marines on the battlefield in Iraq with the radar team to two months later being in a classroom um, with young people, that was just a heck of a transition. Over the next 12 years, Walker and his family would live some of their toughest battles as he dealt with alcoholism, anxiety, and lost employment. Because I wouldn't address, you know, my own combat trauma, PTSD. I wouldn't address my substance abuse issues. And so I lost jobs. I lost my family. PTSD, or post-traumatic stress disorder. About 23% of all Iraq and Afghanistan combat veterans have been diagnosed with the condition. According to the Department of Veterans Affairs, 17 veterans die by suicide each day because of PTSD. Mental health experts say multiple deployments are but one factor, but new treatment options are showing promise. The veteran today looks different than the veteran that maybe came back from Vietnam or survived World War II. Elizabeth Kleeman is a suicide prevention coordinator at Houston's Michael E. DeBakey VA Medical Center. In the last year, the hospital has opened a new mental health facility and hired 100 new mental health staff members. In addition to the extra manpower, the VA is utilizing the telehealth app, which gives a veteran 24-hour access to counseling visually or through a phone conversation. You can go to your car on your lunch break, open up your phone, you have an appointment scheduled with us, you open up the app and you can talk to that provider and get what you need and really feel better about, you know, going back in. The hospital also now has 13 new marriage and family counselors. Therapists have come to realize that involving the entire family oftentimes has longer lasting benefits. People that come in for couples and family therapy stay in therapy three times longer than they do for individual therapy. Spencer Walker has been winning his battle with PTSD in recent years. After needing the intervention of the court system in 2014, Walker has mentored more than 150 veterans whose PTSD has landed them in legal trouble. He also now is a director of a mental health advocacy organization. There is help out there and there is hope. And, you know, there are folks around you that love you, are concerned for you, and it takes a true warrior to step up, to reach out, admit that they need some help, and to seek it. Mental health experts say it is crucial for veterans to seek help within days of transitioning to civilian life. They say there can be certain triggers that unexpectedly bring on stress, and it's important for veterans just to talk to someone, even if they don't believe they have any triggers to worry about. Veterans can contact the National Crisis Hotline 24 hours a day at 1-800-273-8255. They also can chat online or text. We'll have that information in this story at click2houston.com. Keith Garvin, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Now here's investigator Robert Arnold with the story you will see all new tomorrow night at 6. Just want to make sure it's safe before you be driving, all right? Every year, tens of thousands of people are arrested for drinking and driving. Public perception about DWI has to change. Many are repeat offenders. I don't ever want him to be out on the streets again, because obviously he's going to do it again. Channel 2 investigates what police and prosecutors are doing to keep repeated drunk drivers off the road. At the end of the day, we've got to change these people's behavior. But what happens when people don't change? Our investigation is Monday at 6 p.m. on KPRC Channel 2 News. Now to a developing story, the governor of New York is working to deploy additional resources to help Puerto Rico. The island is working to recover from multiple earthquakes. This is some parts of the island are still rebuilding after Hurricane Maria. Governor Andrew Cuomo now trying to help by sending 26 bilingual mental health professionals and 25 building inspectors. The group will head to Puerto Rico on Tuesday. A landslide has washed away a road to a ski resort in western Canada, leaving hundreds of people there stranded. The landslide occurring 80 miles east of Vancouver during a torrential downpour on Friday. The Transportation Ministry says it could be up to six days before a single lane can be open to any type of traffic there. Authorities say as many as 500 people are in that village and now stuck. Incredible to see the power of Mother Nature there. Let me tell you something, that used to happen all the time when I worked out in Oregon. Some of those small little 
mountain roads get up there, there'd be a big boulder and it would just yeah. right in the center. And of course, it smashed the whole road and it just shut it down. And, and you know, there are little tiny towns and communities in there stuck. that got stuck. Yeah, they yeah. had to find another way out. So hmm. thankfully, we don't have to deal with that. It felt like, you know, April out there today. We had beautiful sunsets too. Really nice. Click two pins. This one sent in from uh, Ann down in Galveston. That's over at Indian Beach. Uh, love this one. This is Thomas. He said he was out, got the sunset, grabbed this. Just beautiful fire painting with his phone. I love, love, love the windmill too. It's so cool. And a nice one there uh, from our good friends downtown. That's looking over towards, uh, looks like somewhere in the midtown. We'll go from there. So anyway, we've got a bunch more. I'll show you those at 1030. Keep them coming tonight. Really appreciate that as well. I know Britta loves them in the morning. Let's talk numbers for today. It was warm out there. You didn't even need to tell you that. You knew it when you stepped outside. 76, both Intercontinental and Hobby. 70 down towards Galveston. So you say, well, that's got to be close to a record. Not really. Records are all set back in 1911, 1963. Notice that they're all right in the low 80s. Now, we're going to get real close on Tuesday. The record for Tuesday is 79. Right now, my forecast for Tuesday is 78. And I think there'll be some spots uh, that may tie or get close to record setting heat because we're going to really start to crank those south southwest winds. Now, Right now, everybody's out of the south, anywhere from about seven, eight miles an hour. Notice that we've got temperatures that are still fairly mild on our triangle energy camera looking downtown. Anywhere from right about 60 degrees, low 60s, upper 50s. Same thing as you get to the coast, touch cooler than that out to Columbus and down towards Angleton. But that's about where these temperatures are going to park it for the night. I don't think we're going to see much movement in those temperatures. And that is why we've got that pretty steady south wind coming in as well. Not only that, but some cloud cover moving back into the region. You see a good portion of that basically from Houston working its way down towards San Antonio. Let's kind of widen things out and show you the bigger snapshot. We've got some light showers down around Brownsville that's sliding its way up the coastline. Keep a watch on those for tomorrow morning. But we've also got this. This is our area of low pressure that's slowly developing. This is going to work its way through the mountains and meet up with some of that Pacific moisture. And those two streams put together is going to create a pretty vigorous cold front that'll move through here midweek. So let's start with tonight going into tomorrow morning's forecast. Get you up and out the door, back to work and school, upper to mid 50s. Very mild start to the day. Look at this by lunchtime already out into the mid 70s cloudy steady south wind and then we have some light showers moving in maybe even a quick thunderstorm too down around the coast by about four or five o'clock so that's about 20 30 percent for showers both monday and tuesday that's the story this high shifts out of the way and that allows for this low to start moving in now Here's where things get interesting. Notice that we've got all this cold air that's going to be plunging in behind here as well. So all these colors that you see up around northwest Texas, anywhere from sleet, freezing rain, maybe even a little bit of snow trying to pop its way through. Here's the deal. I think we're going to see a cold rain Wednesday. There's a slight chance some of the northwest counties, that means around the Brazos, could get a quick burst of maybe some sleet and maybe a few flurries. But I think closer to Houston, though, we're just dealing with mainly cold rain, and then eventually we'll see that high pressure kind of clears things out for Thursday, but we're going to get crashed back into winter real quick. So we'll go 70s, near records on Tuesday, then smashing into the 50s and 30s by Wednesday, Thursday into Friday morning, and then warming as we get in towards the weekend. Not too bad forecast, as we mentioned. XFL starts, Roughnecks in town. I believe they're playing L.A., if I'm correct, Mr. McAvoy. Is that right? Yes, sir. All right, that's what I thought. He's on the set to confirm. Well, right I now. know. That's why, that's why I like having him here, because I can tell you those things. And then uh, we'll see more rain as we get in towards next week. But uh, we'll continue to kind of watch things for that Wednesday front as it gets closer right. to us. This just in. Randy's on the set. I know Randy all schedules. On the set. I know. All you do. Do. So, XFL all Roughnecks. There. That's right. <laughs> what are they doing there? That's right. Uh, yeah. Hey, say so NFL season is, is now over. Wow, what a wild game that Super Bowl is over. A nice finish there in Miami. It was good. Chiefs with just too much firepower and offense. They were the favorites. They end up getting it done. We'll take you out to Miami for the key plays in Casey's win over the Niners. And we'll hear from the winners. That's coming up in sports. All right, welcome into the Xfinity Sports Desk tonight. It is over in Miami. What a finish in Super Bowl 54. Chiefs and 49ers, they put on a nice show there in South Florida. A late flurry by KC got the job done tonight. Let's pick it up. Some key plays in this one. 10-3 Chiefs on top late in the first half. Niners driving and finishing. Jimmy Garoppolo to Kyle Juszczyk takes it in right there. San Fran and KC all tied 10-10 at the half. Yeah, Shanahan's all fired up. Then late in the fourth, let's fast forward. Chiefs went up 24-20. Here's the icing on the cake. Damian Williams breaks free 38 yards. It's time to celebrate. Chiefs put it away 31-20 the final. Casey's first Super Bowl win in 50 years. The first for head coach Andy Reid. You know, we've been preaching all year, man, that to kind of take, take, take control of our moment, right? Our opportunity. I feel like we let those guys kind of 
you know, get back in it. And, you know, but I was, I was proud of our defense, the way we responded. We have heart. I mean, that's just from day one. Coach, coach pushes us to be the best people that we can be, and we never give up. All right, much more coming up on Sports Sunday this afternoon. Rockets facing Pelicans rookie sensation Zion Williamson. And Zion's first basket, look at this. Oh, uh, yeah, an alley-oop from 60 feet out from Lonzo Ball for the throwdown. But a huge afternoon for this guy. James Harden, it's been a while. He's been struggling, but he had 40 in the game today. His first 40-point game in three weeks. He also hit seven threes in the contest. Rockets undefeated when he does that, and they win again today. Two straight wins with Clint Capella resting that sore heel. Rockets will take it. They'll host Charlotte coming up on Tuesday. Hey, plenty more on Sports Sunday. Uh, we have uh, more on that Chiefs victory over the Niners. Ari will join us live. Uh, from Miami with post-game reaction. We'll also talk Astros as Dusty Baker was hired as the new manager. Did Jim Crane get it right? Most believe he did. We'll hear from Baker coming up tonight. Also, we're going to break out the top three skits from Saturday Night Live. <laughs> we'll critique Mr. J.J. Watt. And mm -hmm. I think he did a pretty nice job well. last yeah, night all the way around. We'll kind of break that down a little bit. Well, it's a fun on Sports Sunday, 11 o'clock. All right. Thanks a lot, Randy. Hairstyle controversy on Barbers Hill getting the attention from members of the Texas legislature. What that politician's plans to do after a local teen was told they couldn't walk at graduation because of his hair. In Texas. Live from KPRC, this is Channel 2 News at 10. Dancing the night away out in Miami, Shakira and J-Lo going hard in Hard Rock Stadium. We've got the highlights from that very amazing halftime show. And a Barbers Hill ISD student in the middle of a hairstyle controversy now gaining the attention from a politician. What that representative is doing that could impact schools around the entire state. A lot of people think they are starting or want to start their new business, but something just keeps holding them back. If you've been itching to become an entrepreneur, one Houstonian may inspire you to finally make the leap. Her story coming up in our Sunday Conversation Series. A two-year-old boy named Kevin has died just three days after he was taken to the hospital for several injuries. The toddler's uncle, Melvin Morales Gomez, seen there, has since been arrested and charged in connection to those injuries. Prosecutors say Kevin's brain was swollen, causing him to lose oxygen along with fractured and broken bones. We're told just months ago, he was brought to the U.S. with his uncle and brother from Honduras. Gomez is being held behind bars in a $500,000 bond. Kevin's eight-year-old brother now in CPS custody. The Senate impeachment trial of President Donald J. Trump resumes on Monday, but the president's acquittal all but certain. NBC's Jennifer Johnson has more. With President Trump all but guaranteed an acquittal in the Republican-controlled Senate this week, a new NBC News Wall Street Journal poll shows Americans still divided. 46% of registered voters say the president should be removed from office. 49% say he shouldn't. But a majority believe he did abuse his power and obstructed Congress. The president lashing out at Democrats in a pre-Super Bowl interview on Fox. I see the hatred. I see the... They love it. They don't care about fairness. They don't care about lying. A key Republican who voted against hearing from witnesses, including former National Security Advisor John Bolton, admits the president did pressure Ukraine's leader to investigate Joe Biden. I think it was wrong. Um, inappropriate was the way I'd say improper crossing the line. Uh, and then the only question left is who decides what to do about that? Alexander leaving it up to voters. That same poll shows President Trump currently trailing Biden, Senators Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, and Mayor Pete Buttigieg in an election that's more than 270 days away. Some fellow Republicans are criticizing their Senate colleagues. Former GOP New Jersey Governor Christine Todd Whitman tweeting, not calling witnesses shows that Republicans have lost any moral compass. Shame on you. There has never been an impeachment trial where witnesses weren't called. I still think it's enormously important uh, that the president was impeached because the country is moving away from its democratic ideals. Democrats say the truth will continue to come out. Jennifer Johnson, NBC News, Washington. Super Bowl 54 officially in the books, and boy, what a night it was out in Miami. The Kansas City Chiefs winning that big game, 31-20, to was a final. While the game was pretty exciting, we have to talk about that amazing halftime performance as well. It was monumental, to say the least, with Shakira kicking things off, and boy, getting the crowd to shake their hips just a bit. I mean, how can you not get into it? Shakira performing a medley of her greatest hits? She even crowd surfed, played the guitar and drums. That exciting performance followed by yet another with J-Lo. 
There you go. That's not all. Lopez's 11-year-old daughter, Emmy, totally stealing the show when she joined her mama on stage to sing a beautiful rendition of Let's Get Loud and Born in the USA. By the way, not only was this performance amazing, it was also making history. This is the first time two Latina women headline the halftime show. If you want to watch that halftime show over and over again, just like we do, we've posted some of the highlights on our website at click2houston.com. We were talking about that. Obviously, we're talking about the game, too. Yeah. Man, those ladies. Shakira still got it. Yeah, she does. Still got Both it. Both of them do. But she's, she's one of my favorites to this yeah. day. Still, I, I got, I got, I got special. Uh -huh. I got a special place for her right there. And for whatever reason, I forgot that she could play the guitar. Oh yeah, and, the drums. and drums. Yeah, she's super talented. Okay. Yeah, yeah, they did a great job tonight. So kudos to them and everybody who put it on. All right, let's talk weather. Triangle Energy camera looking out at the Williams Tower. A okay. We've got mid upper 50s to about 60 degrees. You're like, gee, Sapes, that sounds like a little warmer than it should be. You would be correct. Mid 40s is about where we should be this time of year in terms of those overnight lows. So we're going to keep it fairly warm. One of the reasons why is we've got a pretty steady southwest wind, and so not only is that bringing the clouds back, but jump a little closer down into south. Texas here, you see some very light showers. These will also be moving closer to us as we get in towards, we'll call it mid-afternoon. I'll show you the timing here coming up in a few minutes. Right now, though, pretty steady south wind. That's got everybody hanging in the 50s and 60s, so you won't need that heavy coat late tonight or if you're first shifting getting out tomorrow morning. I think you'll be okay. We're going to likely hold right in those mid-50s, but then quickly jumping back up into the 70s again, and obviously we'll watch the shower start to move on through. They'll be there not only tomorrow, but Tuesday as well, and that cold front's going to bring back some winter, and how about a little wintry precipitation for some folks across the state of Texas. I'll show you where I think that best chance is and what we've got for the rest of your work week here in just a bit. All right, our ears perked up. Thanks a lot, Justin. Remember, you can track the weather anytime you want. All you have to do is download Frank's free weather app, and you can do that by searching KPRC in your app store. Happening tomorrow, a man accused of shooting and killing a Northwest Houston gas station worker last year set to appear in court. Marcus Cox Davis has been charged with capital murder in connection to the shooting death of 31-year-old Donna Pena. Pena was killed while working at a convenience store at Perry Road near Cypress Creek Parkway back in March. A Houston woman charged in the kidnapping and death of an Austin mother and her newborn is set to appear in a Travis County court later this week. Megan Faramuska has been charged with capital murder in the death of Heidi Broussard. Heidi and her newborn child went missing in December. Heidi's body was found in the trunk of a car just outside Megan's home in northwest Harris County. A child was later found safe inside the home. New developments in the hair stock controversy in Barbers Hill ISD. A local state representative now working to introduce a new bill that would make it that no child in Texas can be discriminated against because of their hair. This comes after high school senior DeAndre Arnold was told he can't walk the stage for graduation or return to normal classes unless he cuts his dreadlocks. Arnold's family says his dreadlocks are part of his Trinidadian culture. Now State Representative Ron Reynolds is introducing new legislation that, if passed, will prevent school districts from creating policies that affect students based on their natural hair. Bells for Abigail, our community's chance to honor a little girl and cancer fighter who continues to touch people and inspire them even after her passing. Abigail Arias, an honorary Freeport officer, leaving behind a legacy that shines bright every time a child rings their end of treatment bell. Hard. <laughs> That was little Parker there who got the chance to ring the bell after winning his fight against Burkitt's lymphoma. He stayed relentless, just like Abigail wanted all tiny cancer fighters to do. If you happen to have video of your child ringing the remission bell, be sure to upload it at clicktohouston.com forward slash bells for Abigail. We, of course, will continue to show those videos on air and at clicktohouston.com along with our KPRC2 social media pages. It was a big weekend for Texan star J.J. Watt. He gave a memorable performance on SNL. Still to come, Justin and I are sharing some of our favorite sketches of the night. And a bulldog is safe and sound after finding itself in a very scary situation. Why firefighters had to come to its rescue next. Comfortably. 
A man in Michigan is recovering and a woman behind bars after she reportedly bit off a part of his tongue. Police say it happened while they were kissing in his Detroit apartment. That much was consensual. According to investigators, that is when Ulette Wedgworth allegedly bit him pretty hard. She's now charged with aggravated assault. Police recovered the part of the tongue she allegedly bit off and got it to medical professionals right away. A daring rescue caught on camera. Wisconsin firefighters making the rescue on Lake Michigan Friday morning after a dog fell through the the ice there. 12 year old English bulldog by the name of Tough was seen struggling in 10 feet deep water in South Milwaukee. Firefighters safely pulling that dog out of that water though. Now after some warming up, Tough is finally back home safe and sound and of course melting hearts across America. Good little guy there. Look wow. at him. How'd he get in that water in the first place? Uh, He's got a story well, to tell. You, you saw what happened. Like it's really thick near the surface or near the shore because it's shallow. But then, and then it gets deeper and deeper. The ice gets thinner and thinner and you don't realize it until you go Pew. And it was a big dog. That was a big dog. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that dog. happens more often. That's why you gotta just be so careful with sure. stuff like that as that well. That was a good ending though. Yeah, good ending, thankfully. So nice to see that. All right, let's talk about what was a beautiful ending to our forecast for the rest of the night tonight. We've got temperatures pretty mild out there. If you're a fan of winter, just stay with me for a couple days. I promise we'll at least get a little bit of it into uh, some of the work we forecast, but it's not gonna be tonight and certainly won't be tomorrow either. Temperatures out there right now, you can see anywhere from the mid upper 50s to low 60s. And that's courtesy of this fairly healthy and steady south wind that's gonna continue through most of the night tonight and into tomorrow. We'll really crank the temperatures up once again. So let's run those numbers. Starting with as we go into the overnight hours, we'll dip down briefly into the mid 50s and then quickly jump back up into the 70s as we get in towards lunchtime. Notice a lot of cloud cover. Won't see much rain just yet until we get some showers sliding in from the west. And there could be some quick little downpours as they move on through. Notice it's not super widespread. So that's Monday's forecast. And then as we get into Tuesday, we're going to see more of that as well. So the clouds are out there now. There's some light showers down in South Texas that we'll keep a watch on but it's two different things. We've got moisture coming in from the southwest. That's sort of the Pacific jet, if you want to think of it that way. So it's the real juicy tropical stuff. And then we've got this cold, dry air coming in from the north. Snow with that, but put both of those together. That's going to eventually lead to a pretty strong cold front that'll slide through here as we get into Wednesday. So the timing on that looks like this. Sc uh, scattered showers tomorrow. Tuesday, same story. They're going to be on the light side, 20, 30%, nothing major. And then notice as we get to late Tuesday night, what happens? There's the front, so it hasn't reached here just yet. So expect temperatures late Tuesday night to still be in the 60s as we go into the overnight hours. But look at all of this changeover. That's a little bit of sleep, maybe some freezing rain, maybe even a little bit of snow up on the panhandle. And then that's going to get a little sloppy over towards Dallas, Fort Worth. So if you're headed up that way, Wednesday afternoon, temperatures will be dropping throughout the day. We will start likely at midnight, probably close to 70 degrees. By Wednesday afternoon at this time, I'd put us at about 52 to 54 and a cold rain too. Now, that said, here's the trick to this. By early Thursday morning, notice that the computer models want to try to paint a quick little strip or a stripe of a fast changeover, maybe a little bit of wintry precip. It still looks like the majority of that's going to stay a little further north, maybe the northwest Brazos Valley. If you're up around that way, you may get a, a quick sleet, some freezing rain. I think for much of the metro Houston area, it's just going to be cold, and then we'll see that high pressure move in. That'll get us some sunshine as we get into Thursday, but be ready for some very chilly temperatures, especially as we get in towards Wednesday and Thursday mornings, even into Friday morning as well. Tomorrow, cloud cover, temperatures, and they're back up into the 70s. Rain chances will be moving upwards of around 20, 30, maybe even 40 percent as you get down towards the coast. 30 percent overall on Tuesday, then Wednesday, there's the front. Basically, we'll start at about 58. We'll crash into the 30s as we get in towards the overnight hours by Thursday. Sunshine's back for the weekend. Looks pretty good, too. We'll be back up into the 70s. And next week, a little bit of an unsettled pattern. Front kind of gets stuck right on top of us there. Unfortunately, it doesn't clear through, so that won't give us the cooler air, but it is going to keep the shower chances around and things kind of murky, so we'll sort of work our way through that. Of course, my good friend Britt Merman will be here along with the rest of the crew tomorrow morning starting at 4.30 to get you out the door for your Monday morning. All right, stick around. Let's talk a little bit more. It's been 24 okay. hours, but all yeah. Houston's still talking about J.J. Watt's debut on Saturday Night Live. He, he killed it. Yeah, he really did. He did great. Houston, Texas star was on fire from the monologue to his goodbye. So tonight we are looking back at some of our favorite moments. Of course, one of mine when J.J. had to do some of the voiceovers for Madden. Take a look. A9. Sorry, boys. That one's on me. Nice. A10. Captain Clumsy strikes again. And A11. God, I suck today. Nice. You are a pro, JJ. Thanks, man. But I mean, it, it kind of sounds like video game JJ Watt messes up a lot. Yeah. 
It's pretty good. It's so good. <laughs> and and then, what about you're going to the Super Bowl? And, and, and then the picture tickets. they show him, they're like, here's your avatar. And he's like, I'm all fat. Oh, <laughs> I didn't see it. Oh, it's so good. All of it. I saw a snippet of it. That's it's pretty so good. good. Well, you had a good one, too, as well. I did have a good one. Yeah, I, you know, I thought he did really well with a lot of those. But, but the one I think was so good just because it was JJ in an environment was the one with Robbie when he's in the locker room. Hilarious. If you missed this one, entirety. it is just classic JJ. Just, just hit it up. Check it out. Yeah. Bobby deserves a coach. And what about you, Riley? You want Robbie to take your spot? No! He sucks at football! You guys want Robbie to play in a playoff game? That is bad crazy. We're gonna fing Oh my God, there was a lot of bleeping going on in that great. one, but it was pretty funny. It so. was super funny, because if you've ever seen the movie Rudy, that's kind of yes. the theme they were going with, is that this kid, he's an underachiever, you know, they all the football the players, right, they want to give him the shot until you get to JJ, Boy, and he's like, you people are crazy. Well, and that's the buildup. You yeah. think that he's going to do it, but then you realize immediately yeah. that was not the case. And it, it's funny, it gets even funnier from that point, where yeah. he talks it, about how he didn't want to hit him yep. for a certain reason. It was brilliant. It, was it really brilliant. was funny. He, I, I thought he did a real nice job overall. And uh, Luke Combs, too, uh, if you're, if you're yeah, not familiar with him, I believe he'll be coming up at uh, Rodeo this year as well. Is it? I don't know. I'd have to double check back. that. But I'll tell you, he did a real nice job, too, if you're a big fan of Luke Combs. It was some funny stuff, though. It we was were a lot talking about it in the yeah. newsroom. All right, thanks a lot for that. Hey, still to come, a Houston woman pouring her dreams into her small business, and it pays off in a big way. Stay with us. Two Star. Voters struggling to get to the polls can now look to Lyft for a little bit of help. The Rideshare Service announcing it'll be expanding the free and discounted ride program throughout the primary calendar and general election. The initiative begins tomorrow at the Iowa caucus. Lyft has partnered with the League of Women Voters and the National Urban League to get more people to exercise their right to vote. The world's richest person, now a bit richer, Amazon founder and CEO Jeff Bezos has an extra $8 billion with a B in his piggy bank. That small piggy bank. That's after a surge in the company's stock. Uh, it follows a holiday earnings report that surpasses expectations. In fact, the company, get this, briefly topping a trillion dollars of worth during Friday's trading. Speaking of rich, check this out. Louis Vuitton has jumped into the restaurant business. Yesterday, it opened two cafes inside of its new flagship store in Osaka, Japan. The restaurant's menus were curated by a chef whose Tokyo restaurant was actually named one of the best in the world by the French restaurant ranking guide Le Liste. I think that's how you say it. Louis Vuitton is the latest luxury line to debut a high-end eatery at one of its flagship stores. Clothing and chemistry, two things that don't necessarily seem to have a lot in common, but according to Megan Eddings, they do. Channel 2's Tania Wright introduces us to a local entrepreneur in this week's Sunday Conversation. You have such an amazing, unique story. Tell us a little bit about it. Thank you uh, for having me. Yeah, so I founded Excel Lifestyle. It's anti-stink, antibacteria workout clothes. I never thought I'd be an entrepreneur, but I say entrepreneurship found me. I moved here to Houston about 15 years ago. I was selling medical equipment uh, in the med center, like MRI machines, CAT scan machines. But before that, I was working in a chemistry lab. So chemistry is actually my background. And I never thought I'd do chemistry again until I met my now husband, Kyle, and I was washing his workout clothes, specifically about five years ago, and I would smell his shirts, and I was like, okay, this problem still exists, because I have two brothers mm -hmm. as well. So that stinky kind of workout, musty, mildewy smell whacked me right in the face. It takes a lot of confidence, you know, to just do what you did. You had this idea and you're like, I'm going to make this work and start a business. That's right. And I never knew really what, and I still don't know what the end game is going to be. People say, how big do you want to get? I say, well, have you heard of Lululemon? And that's usually my response. And then I'll say, well, we want to be bigger. So you just kind of take it a day at a time and put one foot in front of the other and don't be afraid to ask for help. You've been able to work with some pretty amazing mentors. I have. When I entered these uh, local competitions put on by the city of Houston and HCC and New Spring, they actually assign you mentors randomly and the cool thing is those mentors two years later or a year later are still my mentors and most recently uh, I applied for Inc magazine they had a national competition where they chose 40 founders in honor of their 40th year as a magazine and they paired those 40 founders from across the states with a what I call a baller mentor uh -huh. so literally on the day that we officially launched Excel lifestyle August 20th of uh, 2019 I get a call from New York City from Inc magazine saying you know stay by the phone you've been chosen as one of the top 40 founders and then your mentor is gonna call you so basically I was sitting there who's it going to be 
Tillman Fertitta. Which so is Till amazing. Yeah, so Tillman Fertitta is my mentor uh, via Inc. Magazine for the Founders Project for Excel Lifestyle, and it's it's been incredible. He's been a joy to work with. Uh, all of his advice is invaluable. Obviously, he didn't become as successful as he is um, unless he took you know risks and he's experienced it all, so his advice has been awesome. I initially thought I would just be selling clothing, mm -hmm. and then quickly when I started talking about the fabric, people actually want to license the fabric from me and use it in various applications, whether it be on the medical field. I actually uh, pitched to NASA, so NASA's actually, this is actually fascinating. So NASA's astronauts, or astronauts, have to work out about two hours uh, a day in outer space so their wow. muscles don't atrophy, because there's no gravity. So they're looking to develop or find someone who has developed antibacteria clean fabric. So they wear it as much as they want when they're out on their missions and their fabric always stays clean. So uh, yes, I'm in talks with NASA about the fabric. And just saying it out loud, it's a wild feeling. So being a female entre entrepreneur has been wonderful and something that's been really cool is most of my mentors are actually men. So they are not looking at me, which is really awesome, as a female or a male. They're just looking at me for my qualities that I bring to the table. Houston is one of the top places in the entire country for women entrepreneurs. How does it feel to be a part of that? It's incredible. I mean, Houston's like the best kept secret in some areas. I mean, we know because we live here, but there are so many different groups specifically tailored to women that want to help women entrepreneurs. Starting a business or just branching out to something different can be really scary what is what something you would tell a person watching this right now stop just reading about it and thinking about it and just take the first step and do it just rip the band-aid off and just take the first step doesn't have to be a big step it might just be file for your LLC it might just be reaching out to another entrepreneur that you admire and you know buying them lunch or coffee and asking them questions because we all get stuck in these reading positive quotes and reading these business books, but sometimes you just got to take the action. So how do you feel about how far you've come from the thought in your head to now? Proud. Proud. And that's not a word I say often. Yeah, proud. And with good reason. Justin's got one more check of the forecast coming up. Don't go anywhere. All right, welcome back. Sports Sunday, less than three minutes away. Join me, Vanessa, and Wexler right here in studio. And we have Ari live in Miami. Super Bowl 54 in the books. Chiefs hit a 50-year drought with that win over the Niners tonight. We'll run through the top plays of the game. Plus, we have plenty of post-game celebration. All right, James Harden appears to be back on track. How his big day at Tortoise Center locked up the win over the Pelicans. And how the West standings are shaking out now as we hit the final stretch. Plus, did the Astros get it right by hiring Dusty Baker? We'll We'll hear from the new skipper tonight, and we'll break down J.J. Watt and Saturday Night Live a little bit more from what you guys did. I thought he did a great job. We'll <laughs> yeah. talk about it straight yeah. ahead. All right, we agree. Thanks a lot for that, Randy. And Certainly you, did. my friend, have one final check of the forecast. I do. Let's check out your final forecast there. Uh, still going to be warm tomorrow and Tuesday. That cold front will change everything by Thursday and Friday. So just sort of watch out for some storms on and off threads. All right, keep an eye out. That does it for us. Sports Sunday is next. You have a great evening.